Another injury, man. Doesn't this suck? Aren't injuries just the worst thing? This is a tricky beat. They suck for the player, they suck for us, they suck for the team. It's just overall, it's just a horrible thing. But unfortunately, this is the real world and these things can happen. And Andre Robertson is now out for the season for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I would say Robertson has been quietly one of the more valuable players in the NBA for a while. Just because... When he's in the game, OKC's defense is great. When he's not in the game, it's not as good. And for his lack of a jump shot, and for how ugly it looks sometimes for him on offense, he doesn't really kill them on the floor. Like Their offensive rating is basically the same whether Robertson is in or not in the game. Now, of course, that's not the end-all be-all. He plays almost the majority of his minutes with the starters. So, yeah, makes sense. His net rating is going to be kind of pretty. But at the same time, I think just watching Robertson, you see his value. You see his value as a defender. 6'7", can defend probably three positions. And I I think you could put him on some power forwards and you could be pretty okay as well. And now, what does OKC do? I think there's a lot of options they have. There's reshuffling of the lineups. There's maybe just putting in one of their other shooting guards to replace Robertson. Whether it be Abrinas for more shooting but bad defense or Terrence Ferguson for not as good defense but still pretty okay but also no outside shooting. Maybe Patrick Patterson comes into the lineup and then you um, move Paul George to shooting guard. Maybe there's a trade inbound. A lot of different options for the OKC Thunder, so let's talk about it. Between their perimeter guys, I think Terrence Ferguson may be the best choice just because... He's a better defender than Abrinas. This team has already gotten used to playing with Robertson, who's not much of an offensive player. And to be fair, Ferguson's like a little better of a shooter than Robertson is. I mean, in Ferguson's uh, one year in Australia, he shot like 60%, not 60%, that would be insane. He shot like 31% from three. Still not that good, but it's definitely better than Robertson. And you assume he's going to get some wide open looks on this... uh, you know, playing with the starting lineup. But at the same time, he's probably not what Robertson is as a defender. So can you handle a decent but not lockdown defender who's also under average on offense? Because when when you have Robertson, he's so good defensively that he's able to make up for the fact of how bad he is on offense. Well, to his credit, he has good moments of, like, cutting and stuff like that. So he he, he helps himself out there. But still, the defense is the, is the bread and butter with him. Ferguson, maybe he's not good enough of a defender to make up for what he can't do on offense. We'll just have to see. You know, maybe his offense is better than I think it is. As for Abrinas, I mean, he's got problems on defense. Like, he's, he's 6'6", so you think he can at least be kind of okay, but... I mean, the, between Ferguson and Abrinas, it's clear who the better defender is. And he, although I do think Abrinas is a better shooter than Ferguson, I don't know. I think this team is just, it's its kind of a team chemistry thing where they've gotten so used to playing with a guy in Robertson who the defense ignores sometimes and they've been able to kind of like adjust to it pretty well, especially with Westbrook, to where it might just be a more seamless fit going with Ferguson. Because, I mean, if, if you put Abrinas in there, now who defends the best player on the other team? Is it Paul George? Well, he can't do that all the time because, you know, he's got offensive responsibilities. You can't ask Westbrook to do that. You can't ask Melo to do that. You're asking Abrinas to defend, like, James Harden 25 minutes a game? That's going to be a problem, you know? And then if Abrinas, sure, he might make a couple more threes, but is it going to be enough of a difference, you know? So it'll be an interesting thing. Maybe one of the perimeter players they have on the team is not the guy who's meant to replace Robertson. Maybe Jeremy Grant, but even then, he's kind of shaky on defense. He has good moments, he has bad moments, and then his offensive game needs a decent amount of work as well. So I think the next potential option is you move Patrick Patterson into the starting lineup, you put him a power forward next to Steven Adams, and then you have Westbrook, Uh, PG, Mello, Patterson, Adams. Now, I can't find much evidence that says Patterson has played with that lineup much this season. 
but I can see that he's played with Steven Adams for 79 minutes this year, and they're actually plus 20 together. Now that's a decently small sample size, but it's something to go off of, right? Patterson shooting about 40% from three this season. He's only taken about two a game. He is still kind of a hesitant shooter. There are times when he just can't make a shot to save his life. But, I mean, if he's the one getting those wide open looks that Robertson used to get, you have to assume that he can be productive offensively for you, and then defensively he can move around pretty well. Now, is he able to defend the really good perimeter players on other teams consistently? No, he's too slow for that. Robertson could do that for you. I think Patterson can defend power forwards, some small forwards. He can occasionally switch onto some guards, and if it doesn't happen too often, he can be okay. But he's definitely not going to be what Robertson was as a perimeter defender. And in turn, that means Paul George probably has to defend the the best guy a few more minutes a game. And I mean, yeah, Paul George can do that, but you also need him to do stuff on offense for you. So it's never going to be as good as what Robertson gave you. But it that seems like from a defensive standpoint, and given that Patterson can make some threes, that one could be the, the one that gets you kind of close to what you once were. But there is still some risk there. And then between Josh Huestes, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, Raymond Felton, Kyle Singler, there is not a perfect seamless fit here, right? So we talk about the idea of a trade. Wesley Matthews is available. Now, to make the money work, it would be a bit of a headache because while Dallas is under the salary cap, OKC is way over the thing. And Wesley makes about 17 to $18 million a year. So you'd probably have to include Abrinas, Kyle Singler, maybe Nick Collison, maybe Raymond Felton. And with that many bodies moving, you might have to include a third team in it. I think if OKC was really determined to get Wesley Matthews, they could make it happen. And... I mean, we're talking 3 and D guys. Well, he's making his threes this year, and I think he's... He's creeping back on defense. He's moving better, I guess. And if he can get himself some more wide-open looks from Westbrook and Mello and PG, that could be something. However, OKC does not have their pick this season. And because the protection is not technically settled yet, there could be some complications about actually moving the thing to Dallas. Also, is Wesley Matthews really worth the first-round pick? Probably not. Now, I think Avery Bradley is definitely worth a first-round pick, and if the Pistons' season keeps going south here, and it's possible it will, I think OKC should definitely jump on that, because that'd be a good fit, just, you know, right then and there. And then once Robertson returned next season, assuming you'd be able to re-sign Avery Bradley, That'd be a really good defensive uh, thing you'd have between Bradley, Paul George, Robertson, Stephen Adams, assuming Paul George would come back. Now, you would be a pretty expensive team at that point, and you might have to find ways to get rid of Abrinas and Singler's contracts. You'd probably have to attach some picks to those. So there's risk involved in that as well. But I think Avery Bradley could definitely be great for you. And, and I mean, the Pistons have lost seven games in a row. They're currently the ninth seed. I think their season is very close to being basically over. They're three games out of the playoffs right now. I mean, if if, if they just decided that it was done and you were willing to give them a first-round pick for Avery Bradley, again, there's the protection, so who the hell knows here. Yeah, I think that's a possibility. Now, if you were not able to get out of one of those guys or you thought Bradley's uh, contract just was going to make it too expensive, there is Marco Bellinelli if you still wanted to go for someone not on the team. And I think Bellinelli, you might not have to give up a first for him, maybe a second round pick and maybe a Brinus or something. Potentially, the fear would be that Bellinelli is just going to hurt you too much on defense. Uh, But I think in terms of offense, he would be probably better than any choice you have right now unless Patterson just went nuts from outside 
It'll be interesting to see what happens, man. I think the first thing they're going to try to do is see if one of the guys they have now can step in and do stuff. Seems like Ferguson's getting the first opportunity. We'll see if he can be a defender at least somewhat close to what Robertson was and then offensively be okay. Maybe Patterson will get the bill. Maybe someone from outside. Who knows? But um, it's unfortunate, man. OKC's got... They're, they're really starting to to play well, and I do think they can salvage this, but I think they're definitely going to be feeling the effects of this nonetheless.